Well, good morning. And Elisa, you are here already. Thank you so much. I'm all by myself today. So uh, it's nice to have you here already. And let me see if I can pull this up here on my iPad. There we go. Here on my iPad. Okay. Get rid of the... All right. Lisa, I think you're going to like it today because this is one of the things we talked about is um, using the rice paper and uh, the fabric, you know, like we did the uh, little canvas bags in Dallas. And Monica, you're up early. Thank you so much. Well, we got a few of us here together on Sunday. So what's doing this weekend? Anybody cold? I know it's getting colder here really cold so we finally turned on the heater heater in the morning and then by the afternoon we have to hit the air conditioner so it's one of, it's that weird time of year but that's okay um today actually what we're going to do is um I, I kind of experimented a little bit with some products and um, i checked with uh, feral because i think you all have seen the project she did uh with the mannequin and the uh, and the draping and uh, she was kind enough to tell me what she used, which was the uh, Stamperia Collagel. Gel. Unfortunately, that's not available anymore. So I'm, we're just going to go through the products that we've got on hand. And once you see how to do it, you can experiment even with white glue or, you know, any, any other uh, product like De um, Mod Podge. And I think they're just going to work just fine. Hi, Kathy. I think my, uh, it's acting a little funny this morning. Patricia's watching. Yeah. Now, you know, since I'm all by myself, there we go. I've got a little bit of a delay here, and I don't know why. <laughs> of course, it's because I'm by myself, right? Well, let me switch my camera over so we can start talking about this. And, Okay. So um, I'm going to make a tag today, and we're going to play with the uh, the fabric hardener and the draping. But what I did is I did a little experiment. I took a uh, an old peanut butter jar, and I took a uh, it's a it's a piece of linen. It's a fairly heavy fabric, so it's, it's got a lot of texture to it. And I used the fabric hardener, and then I wrapped it up around the jar, let it stiffen. And then I took it off the jar and finished drying the inside. And this is what you get with the fabric hardener. And I, all I did was uh, punch some holes and uh, put a string through it. So you can see where it gathered up. But I started with just a, a circle and then just drew it up. And then afterwards, I trimmed the top. So this is really kind of a fun thing. It's, it's nothing new. I kind of remember this from ages ago when we used to do... Um, uh, like paper mache kind of a thing. It's the same idea, but this is actually a container that you could use. So I really like that a lot. Oops, hold on. Oh. We've got a kitty cat that wants to play, and that's not going to happen today. That was pretty scary. Okay, because <laughs> we know he can hit the power button. But um, like I say, there, there's a lot of different things you can do with the fabric and the hardener. And, as, and then you can actually decorate this. I'll show you a little idea about that later. So what I did for this is I started off just a tag, did some primer, just picked a piece of rice paper that I like. Then I went on, um, I did a search for uh, drawings, just pencil drawings of ladies. And I found one, printed it up, printed it out. So we're going to use this as the, uh, as the figure. And then to match, and this is an experiment too, because I, I wasn't altogether sure which um, fabrics work the best with the hardener. Um, my first guess was, you know, of course, a cotton fabric, but this is a silk. So we're going to see how it holds up to it and if, if it leaves any residue. So this is totally experimental. So let's get started with that. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the um, 
decoupage, varnish, and glue. I also use that to seal the rice paper. So that's ready to go, uh, especially when I add the fabric and the hardener. Hi, Sylvia. So let's see if this is going to work here. Just put a little bit down. And I got to tell you the truth. I have a cat sitting in the back of my chair. So I'm trying to make sure he doesn't get into anything bad. I put them upstairs and closed the door and then they just sat at the door and cried so I'm this is pretty much I'm stuck now here comes another one. now I printed when I printed this off I did it on a laser printer so um, get that down that's a quick and easy Almost had one on the power button. So welcome to my world. Okay, we'll let that let grab my heat gun. We can dry that real quick. And really for something like this, if you have just an image, you know, that you like, um, it doesn't have to be a pencil drawing. It could just be, you know, an image you cut out of paper and then just add the fabric. That's good. All right, now for the fabric. And this is super simple. But I'm actually, well, hi, Roberta. Oh, listen, I'll be glad to hear from you later. You have a good day. Sorry, cat again. <laughs> That's his favorite spot. For this, I'm just, I'm using just some gloves. I'm not usually, I don't care about having paint on my hands or anything like that, but this gets a little, little bit messy. Yeah. Okay. Now for this too, I've got a full piece. It's about an eighth of a yard of fabric. And I know it's not going to take the full thing. So what I'm going to do... Decide about how much I'm going to need and just make a cut. You can also, you know, do a little shaping. But remember, this is totally experimental. Okay. And that's flaking. I had some hardener sitting on the uh, lid and it flakes. All right. Let's see if we can work with this. Take it off. Everything is sticking to me. One moment while I do a little cleanup. Oops. That will not let loose. That's crazy. Okay. Um, what it was is the uh, hardener flaked on my plastic gloves. But we'll make that right. So what I'm going to use is the fabric hardener. This is from Pentart. It's a huge bottle. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit. You don't really need a lot and it it's better to add more than have to pour it back in the bottle. Okay, let me move this aside. So all you're going to do is work this around. 
Like I said, I'm hoping it comes out nice on the silk. You see how much easier it is with a pair of gloves. So you can just take those off. Just work it around. And it doesn't have to be drippy. Everything covered. All right, let's close this up. Now, since this is a hardener, anyways, um, it's it's going to act like a glue. Oops. So let's bring our tag back. Get rid of the string. Let's see what we got. Okay. I'm actually going to get tired of wearing these gloves in a minute or two. I'll probably take them off. So we're just, can you see all right? There we go. Now this is the part, you know, where you, you decide... You know, look at, you know, when you look at a dress and how it drapes and how it folds, this is pretty much what you're heading for. And it can billow up a little bit. And if you want to, you can even, it's hard to see here. You can actually make a fold as if it were a layered dress. And I'm just holding it down for right now. This is more of a play thing. In about two seconds, I'm getting rid of these gloves because they're sticky. It should be right about now. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, you want to make sure Sure, too, when you get to um, the waistline, you're going to have a little bit of bulk there. So, you know, push it down. If if it seems like it's going to be too heavy, just you can go ahead and clip it. You know, like if you're if you sew, you know how to uh, clip your seams. You know, if you're doing a rounded edge, that's just about long enough. And you can pull this up. Make a little bit of the flounce. Just a little finesse, that's all. But you can see it's not that, it's not hard. You can pull this out. And then we'll do a little pinch. And tuck in your edges. Now, if you don't use colored fabric, you know, when this is dry, you can certainly, you can paint it. Which is a whole other option. Hope I'm not getting my head in the way. Sorry, I was looking. All right, and I'm going to push that down right there. All right, now let's see what we have. So this is all there is to it. And I hate to oversimplify, but this is pretty much it. Now, if you want, 
you know, if you need another layer, all you have to do is go back in, get another piece of the fabric, and you can add to it. Let me see where I put that. Or actually, you could add a piece of lace at the bottom. I'm going to let that dry. Let me hit it with something here. This is drying pretty quick, too. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, you can hear it's crunchy already. And really, you can't you can't see the glue once it's dry. I think it'll all disappear and just be color. So now you can just pull this up. Now, if you want a little more volume, you can always stick a little bit of tissue underneath there, and then when you glue down the edges, you're never going to see it. Let me pull this out. Yeah, let's, you can trim this, and you can keep working it too, you know, however you want it. See, I want to pull this in a little bit. There we go. Get rid of the extra strings. Because it's a little bit messy, but you know, it's not terrible. Let me go and pull that up. Trim that off. Now, once this is dry. I can go back over it too. I could add a little bit of glitter. You can add some uh, pearls. Any kind of decoration. Now for this, let me grab a little bit of fabric. I think I'll make the rest of her dress. Let's see if I can do this. Piece that like that. I will tell you, this stuff is stringy. Yeah, actually, it it, it does that. It's acting like a glue. It's already stuck here because I pushed it down. Now for this, these little parts, I didn't push down a lot. You can go back back and stick glue underneath it, and then the name of the product. It's Pentart Fabric Hardener. Hi, Jeanette. So yeah, um, let me see if I can get this in here. And you will notice too that uh, this will darken. But your option then too is, I wanted to kind of match the background. But you can go back over this and you can dry brush it. You can do a lot of things with it. But look, I'm 
playing with it now. And it's right there. And like I say, this basket that I made, this was a couple days ago. And it's like a rock. So it's not it's not going anywhere in a hurry. But you can see as far as the draping, it's it, there's no big secret to it. It's it's really not um it's not magic. And the easy way for me you know, is put on the plastic gloves, put get a little tub, plastic tub, and then just work it around. You know, um I've seen a lot of times they've laid the fabric out and brush it. To me, it's just gonna be messy. So give you know, try it this way. And let me play some more here. I'm going to finish off this dress. And also on this figure, I'm going to go back in and I'll do a little painting. Hold on a second. I'm off camera again. Let's see if I can do that. Play a little bit. This is definitely fussy. Yeah, see, I can glue this little piece right down. And let me get one more like that. If I'm lucky. And you could also just paint this, too. Click that down. Now for this one, I am going to take uh, a little bit of hardener on a brush. Since I still have my bucket. Yeah, if you don't have this, um, consistency is pretty much like white glue, Patricia. It's, um, when you look at it, um, I'm thinking um, like a Mod Podge. And uh, when Farrell did it, you know, like I say, she used the uh, cola gel. So, yeah, it, it's it's almost an experimental thing. I've, uh, I'll show you. I did a couple samples with rice paper on fabric uh, to show you the difference. And let me just, before I get too distracted here, let me just I'm gonna put this in place. On this one, I'm just going to glue it in. And I'll fudge that a little bit. So actually, you, you can paint it on. And I trim that. As long as that one fits. So this is the fabric hardener again, but I'm just painting it in place rather than dipping it. I think it'll hold just fine. I can always trim that once it's done. But, you know, back to which products to use. Um, Stamperia used to have one called Texart, and they discontinued that. So I'd be more inclined to be looking for a, a white glue or um, my pot. It's the same. It's, the consistency is about the same. And if you take a look, there we go. So now we've got this glued into place, and I can clean that up, clean up my edges, which I will do to keep it neat, but can add a trim. Now, the other thing, too, with this, let me switch around here. If you want to add a trim, you can use the um, old-fashioned ribbon or silk ribbon, and you can also harden that. So let's play around with that a little bit. And it's just a matter of, you know, dipping it and shaping it.
Hi, Sandra. Yeah, I hear it's Pug Day. I just saw your post that it was Pug Day. Okay, now on this one, I'm just going to make a bit of a mess. I'll just dip it in and grab my gloves again, otherwise I'll be stuck to the table. Yeah, that flaking, if you're going to wear gloves, um, I didn't rinse them off. I just set them aside. And after they uh, dried, I was getting uh, the flakes. And we don't want that. Yeah, this it's a it's a fun project, but it like I said, just put on the gloves and have fun with it. It's a little messy. Okay, so let's finish this. I'm just going to take and squeeze off the excess in my bucket. Like I say, you can you can use the hardener on lace, ribbon, all kinds of fabric. Obviously, it works on the silk, and it will. It's going to darken it, so don't be don't despair. But this was I thought this would be better than starting with a uh, a white base. And we're just going to. I could also have tied this first. This is practice in hindsight. Yeah, I'll paint the skin, Jeanette. Yeah. I swear, plastic gloves. Okay. And then I can add another. This one's supposed to be the perfect bow. Thank goodness. And it's not permanent. So, I mean, you know, it's like, take it off. If you don't like it. And then once it starts to dry, you can uh, shape it a little bit easier. It's a little hard to manipulate when it's wet. Which we will do. Let me get a little pokey tool here. Yeah, okay. Bring this a little bit closer. You can see what I'm playing with is the bow. I'm trying to get it seated. But once it's hard, you know how sometimes when you go to drape something, it just kind of hangs there? This way, at least where you put it, it's going to stay. And it will also attach to the dress. Okay. Let me hit that a little bit. No, that's just it, Patricia. It, um, that's why I said I'm, um, I hear a lot about, um, you know, using cotton, but uh, I'm using silk on this one. I'm thinking just any, any fabric is going to be fine. You know, if you had a little polyester or a, a printed, you know, type fabric, use that by all means. Okay, I'll fuss with that some more. Okay, I actually rather like that. And then, you know, up in here, you know, you can add, you know, sentiments, a little flowers, or, you know, even add flowers down in here. But let's try to do a little painting so she doesn't look so stark. How's that? I have... We'll start with a little ivory. 
Yeah, we'll at least try to have a finished project today. How's that? And this one is this one was antique ivory. I have another color here. It's got a little bit of uh, pinky in it, like a pink beige. And I'll just draw back over there. So I just downloaded this image and then sized it. And that's the other good reason why I um, put the varnish on it too. And the varnish on the rice paper. So I'll come back in there. A little bit of a ribbon there. I'm just using this full strength right now. Just to get the coverage. Sorry, I'm not breathing while I'm painting, so. See, any excess paint will rub right off. Sorry, I'm missing comments here, too. Oh, hi, Blanche. Yeah, it, thanks, Sandra. You know, the, it's really, um, it, looks, it looks hard. Um, as a matter of fact, we did this um, Monica Peruta uh, had uh, a series that she did. It was uh, drawings. And she always did the draping and everything. That's how I learned to do it. And it was a few years ago. And it's it's really kind of nice to add fabric. Now, alternatively, you don't have to always make a dress. Um, use this, you know, if you've got a canvas. You know how a lot of times you add um, a lot of, you know, paste and stuff to get depth? All you have to do is go through and smoosh some fabric onto the canvas. It, it, it'll be the same thing. You can really make, um, like even for the uh, the new collection, the Songs of the Sea, you could you could make waves, you could make, um, you know, an under underwater scene, and you're not using a ton of product, you know, to get this kind of volume. Imagine how much paste you would have to use, modeling paste, to get this kind of volume. Really, because that's pretty... That's pretty full. So that's just another idea. Let's do the antique rose and see how we get. Add a little water to this. Come on. to fill my water back here. I'm running out of room. <laughs> like that's any big surprise to anybody. Let's get this. And this hardener is it's drying pretty quick too, which I like. You know, it's not like a 24 hour thing. Okay, let's turn this down a little bit. Oops. And I'll go around the edges and put the, some shadows on the outside to define the, uh, the body. Paint off there. 
There we go. That's the other thing too, because I just wiped some off the, uh, the dress and it came right off, so that's good. Yeah, you know, if you're, uh, Jeanette, you were just saying, if, if you're not using the paste, yeah, this is totally lightweight. Yeah, it's not going to weigh a ton. Let's see if we can get some hair. And up right up in here, she's got a bow, which I could go back in and put a little bit of uh, ribbon. I'm just going to use a light brown. And this needs a little more finessing, but we're going to get the basics here. And then I can come in with my brush and put in these little swirls. I get very quiet when I do this. I'm sorry. But then it's, this is a base coat, not a lighter brown. There's a little kitty back here making noise. I have to watch what he's doing. And you can see just... I could do this with a fine line brush also. Let me just do this for now. Put back over this. little turtle dove. I'll definitely play with this one some more. I don't know if I like that. And just bring in some highlights across the top. This is definitely one. Take your time with. Hi, Sylvia. Okay, so you can see where we're going with the hair. You can add as much as you want. So now she has skin. And I'll put in the shadows. Do not step on the computer. Okay, now you see. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> you don't dare turn around. Okay. Yeah, that's still drying. I 
I know most of the time when I do projects, it's an hour and a quick and easy. This one I, I would kind of take a little more time with and play with. But you can see I'm lifting up and the skirt is not pulling up away. Well, hi, Patty. <laughs> Let me just brush off a little of those flakes. But this is virtually dry. Even the ribbon is just about stiff, too. I like that. Okay, so here we go. Now, and I said, like I say, I'm going to put the edges in. And let me grab a matching color. This silk started out as like a petroleum green, so let me do something about that ribbon. Oops. Well, there's like a year's worth of paint right there. I put like a little burgundy bow on it, but for here, I'll just let's just go with the. And I think. And I'll do a little in painting where the, the bow is showing through to the background. So it doesn't stay white. It's that detail work now. So that's coming along. And you can see now that the, it's starting to dry, I can push this down even more. Tighten my little bow. You know how sometimes you know you want the bow to fluff up. This is the time to do it. I'm gonna play with this double for a while, I know. Okay. Oh, the ballerina dancer. Yeah. You know, uh, the stone paper. Yeah, there's, I mean, um, this isn't like brand new, but I will tell you why. While I've got your attention, I wanted to do an experiment. Let me set this aside while it's drying. Back to the plastic gloves again, if I can find them. Oh, they're there. I was wondering if, in fact, you had a little bit of rice paper. See, one thing kind of led to another on this. I was thinking you put you could put rice paper on fabric, so you had a really pretty piece that you like. You know, uh, attach it to the fabric and then use the hardener. But we're going to try right now piece of rice paper and go straight into the hardener. Let's take that and I've got a little canvas and for this one, let's see about brushing it on. I don't, I don't know that it would take to dipping very well. This is like a, a huge bottle, but you can see you can go through it. And if, if you keep watching while I'm painting, it looks exactly like a white glue. And I probably will go and experiment with that to see. Okay. 
I'm not doing it front to back, but let's, let's see what happens. Let's put some on the back side, make sure that might be the trick here. Make sure it gets soaked in. So at least if you have it on front to back, it'll start to stick to itself. Okay, let's do some gathers. Was sticking to me pretty good, but I'll come on, get some more in there. There we go. That's the ticket. If you're going to use the rice paper, probably paint the hardener on your canvas or just paint the back side of the rice paper and it's movable now and it's also sticky okay there's the answer to the rice paper let me dry it and see how it dries Okay. Hi, um, it's a winner. It's looking. You can hear it already. Hardening up. So if you didn't even want to use a pattern fabric, you could just use the uh, the rice paper. Cut this down. I really like that idea. And this is where I'm getting back to also, you know, if you're going to use this on a canvas. Okay, rather than just laying your rice paper flat, you could do this. You could make, um, you could use that and build up a little bit of texture. So, what's the vote on that one? Get some of this off my hand. Okay, Let me clear off a little bit here because that wasn't the end of the experiment. One second here while I clean off some. We're almost there yeah you know in if you use the rice paper as a texture and that would it would go the same too it's just a plain piece of fabric you know if you dip it in get it in there and then you can just uh, manipulate it on your canvas you've got a ready-made uh, texture I'll tell you one thing I thought about that I didn't try is I wonder if you took some fabric and you pressed it into one of the molds and when it's dry, if you pulled it out, it would hold the shape. Remember, like, um, if you remember, we did the toilet paper in the molds. I'm thinking about the same thing, that you could use the hardener. All these great ideas. 
So now, this was the other thing I played with, you guys. Get my brush and some water before it gets like a rock. All right. Now, I don't know if you um, follow ITD, but they've been doing some great things with three dimensional flowers. And uh, the first time I saw it, what they did is they took rice paper and then just have um, decoupage glue. You know, anything, the uh, uh, regular Mod Podge or mixed media glue, anything like that. Anything that you can put layers to stiffen it up. But what they've started doing now is putting the rice paper onto fabric. Because um, somebody took a bunch of these uh, flowers, mounted it on fabric, cut them out, and then mounted it on a lantern. And it was beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. So what I did, and these are the, uh, some of the other mediums that we use. On this one, I had to, I'm just using a little cotton on this one. I used what they call the fabric medium. Now, this will also work like uh, the decoupage glue. If you're attaching uh, something to a, a piece of fabric, a piece of rice paper to uh, some fabric, that will work. And that's what I used on this one. And when it's dry, you can hear it. And then I also, I cut it out. I fussy cut it. Can you see? All right. Oops. Let me go a little closer. So the back is actually fabric. And you can hear this. So it's not going to tear. And then um, what you do is, you know how you do the flower shaping. Same with a uh, little piece of foam. And let me get my stylus. Here we go. Yeah. So just the regular flower shaping. And you can, since it's already got a little bit of stiffener, look at how this pops right up. And you can do that. Go around the back edge of your rows. There we go. So you can see that you can actually use that you know, on a hat or a bag or something like that. So I did several on that one. Even this rosebud is pretty, I think. Or, you know, even use it on a canvas for that matter. It's not uh, restrictive. But this is another good product that you can use on the fabric. Well, hi, Sharon. How are you today? So that was the fabric medium. Then I tried it with the um, the varnish and glue. It's for textiles. Okay. Now this one, it's there. This is the one that I used um, on uh, oof, the other canvas bags that I did. This is for textile. And I took the rice paper and put that on fabric. I wanted to see how that would go. And let's do a quick fussy cut. I won't make you sit here for days and watch. But this is another one. It's a, it's a little bit of a hardener. And these would make great embellishments, you know, on your canvases, too. And like I say, you can even do this without the fabric and just use um, layers of regular decoupage glue, mixed media glue, anything like that. Because that it stiffens it up and you can also shape them. But this seems to be just a little more durable. Depending on how you're going to use it. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, and same idea. Just take it. So that fabric's going to hold it. And this was only one coat. I mean, I didn't do multiple coats on this. There you go. You have a perfectly...
and you can use that just like regular paper embellishments. The last one I did is I used the fabric hardener on the fabric and the rice paper. So that's even, you can even hear, it's even crunchier. I haven't cut this one out yet. So let's see what we get. Now, on, and even on the dress, now if you had smaller flowers, you could cut these out and glue them right to the dress. I didn't cut any little teeny roses to show you, but... Or even attach them to your canvas. So this was this was just a fun experiment for me too. Okay. All right. And here we go. So you can hear it's got a lot of stability. And the truth is that actually what you could do if you mount these on fabric, you could stitch through these on a quilt. I've actually done that um, a long, long time ago. I uh, took rice paper on uh, fabric and then uh, made a quilt out of it. So for anybody that likes to sew out there, this has got a lot of potential too. So that was those products. So between that, we use the, the fabric medium, or we use the decoupage varnish and glue for textile. And the other one was the fabric hardener. And all three, they were pretty much the same one, you know, one is a little harder than the other, but you get pretty much the same result on fabric. Then I went one step further and when we were in uh, Texas, we did um, little canvas bags. And this gives me an opportunity to show you a couple new things that I got from ITD. This is an A3 size and they're all different versions of uh, wreaths. Christmas wreaths, um, the fall, and then the other thing they're doing in conjunction with these flowers on the fabric, you get a whole sheet, but what they, what the intention is, you, you mount these, either do the decoupage glue on the back or mount them on fabric, and then do each set, and then you layer them so you get a, a 3D effect. And on this one, you would get four different versions, and they're just stunning when they're finished. Let me see if I brought another one. Yes. The other new collection was all roses. Blanche, you out there? Here's the roses. But you can see that you've got the base, and then you can mount these on top. With this one, this is the one that I told you uh, she used the entire set and layered it and put it on a, a paper lantern. So it was beautiful. So for quick gifts... And it doesn't get any easier than this. I haven't had a chance to use these yet. So I'm going to break it in. And this works great with any small images. You've got a little bit left over with something that you like to look at. I've got these um, little muslin bags from Amazon for not too much money. And just... Do a light trim. All right. And let me see. I'm going to go with the, um, yeah, the textile. Especially if you were going to use this as a gift bag. It's got the um, the varnish on top so it's going to protect it and 
and I put a little cardboard inside so that uh, it doesn't go through to the back side and glue your bag together. The other thing I remember too is when you pull the drawstring, make sure your design is down far enough. We just set that right in place. I always just put it on the bag and then a good coat on top. And for this, just, oops, before I spill something, I've got another little piece here that uh, ITD sends little extras. And this one happens to say Merry Christmas. I'm going to get that on there. And I think I'll put it at the bottom. Now also, when once this is all dry, uh, we actually took some of the... Um, some powders, you know, uh, metallic powders and stamps. And you can stamp right on the bags, you know, to add a little more interest in the back. It doesn't have to be just a plain old bag. And when you got it this way, just pull it up from your card. And we'll give it a quick dry. And this will burn. It'll burn the fabric, so try not to get too close. Oh, on, the, on this, they're both rice papers. Everything I used on here was the rice papers. There we go. It's just about dry. So you got to, I mean, it's just adorable. You can take these old little strings out and put in, you know, a more decorative ribbon. You know how that is, you know. We always have to change a little something. But see, like I say, once it's got the drawstring in it, it's a perfect little gift bag. We'll let that dry just a little bit more. But these are quick and easy. I really like those. I love these wreaths, by the way. Can, I, I, they just came in yesterday, and I'm still looking at them. They're just so beautiful. There's so many options. We got these. Um, the, I've got the A3 size, but then there's also the um, larger wreaths with two small ones of the same pattern, and then there's also the uh, A4 size, which is what this was that you get the multiples. So you could you could make um, oh you could make a dozen ornaments and they all look different just off of one sheet of rice paper. So that's my idea of fun. And like I say, this uh, there's actually another sheet that will have the fall ones on there too, but I just love these. They're traditional, but not, um, you know, not so much the classic. I like the white a lot. These are really pretty. All right, let's see where we are at here. 
Okay, we covered rice paper on fabric. We've got fabric hardener. We've got the three-dimensional flowers. And here, you can even see. Let's do this just for fun. Now that I have one cut out, it's hard to picture. But just say you had several of them cut out. And let's get a little bit closer. And then you just lay this one on top. Now you see the three-dimensional effect that you get? It's really fantastic. See, let's do a couple of them together. And just make a, there you go. So you can see what you get. And like I say, it's the rice paper. They're, they're not stiff and hard, but they will they'll hold up. And you can do this with anything. Um, you know, any, it doesn't even have to be flowers. I was looking the other day and I saw some of the winter things that, uh, you know, had like little snowmen and little trees. Well, you could put this, um, you know, harden them, you know, with the uh, decoupage glue or whatever. Harden them, cut them out, and then you can um, layer them. So you could have a little tree with the snowman coming up and you don't need to cut paper. You know, it, you, it'll be lightweight. You could put it on anything. You could put it on a on an apron. You could glue it onto an apron, a napkin, napkin rings. So there's just a lot of different things to do with it. You want to start playing with the fabric and the rice paper. So let's see where we're at. Yeah, we're past the one o'clock hour. So what I will do, we'll come back to what we did today. I'll finish, I'll do the outlining on this. This should be just about dry. And I think I'll just add a little something, something here. And maybe do a little dry brushing on the top and see how that comes out. So I hope I covered enough for you, you know, to at least give you some ideas or something you might like to play with. But like I say, don't be afraid of the hardener. Look at this. It's, you can only lift up the edges where I am, but the rest of this is on. So I'd like to see you try it, you know, with all kinds of different things. Even if it was an MDF piece, you know, a mannequin or something like that. Give it a try. And if you do try it with the, uh, with the white glue or something like that, let me know. Because, you know, that's a good alternative. We always like options. So I guess that's it for me for today. And next week we have uh, Patricia. And I know Patricia is going to do something great. Yeah, she has been busy. Every time I see her, she's putting out something new. So I will be excited to see her next week. And let me uh, switch over here. Yeah, this flying solo is hard. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. Um, like I say, if you've got any questions about what I used, you just let me know, you know, or you have a suggestion, we'll give it a shot and uh, see how it turns out. But uh, in the meantime, have a good rest of your Sunday. Everybody take care and we will see you. Oh, there's Benita. Hi. And Francis. Hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if I missed anybody. I think I caught you all. <laughs> but uh, y'all take care and we'll see you next week with Patricia. Okay. Bye for now.